स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Today, let us talk about Laplace equation. Equation Laplace equation. Now, uh, in the first few lectures, we have talked about first order equation, right? So, u t plus uh, u x equals to do the that sort of equation. Yes, transport equation, Waldorf equation, that sort of thing. But now we are transitioning into the second order equation. Why Laplace equation? Let us understand that this thing first. Why Laplace equation? See, the point is, this is the most basic uh, second order equation of elliptic type. If you remember from, uh, I mean, earlier PD courses, what happens is most of the if given, given a general linear PD, linear, okay, PD, okay. of the form of the form so second order the second order how does it look like uh, if you remember uh, it will look like this a u x x plus b i am not writing uh, all of this huh? but a depends on x y so i am talking about two dimensions and b u of x y plus c u of y y plus d u of x plus E u of y plus f u uh, plus let's say g equals to zero. Yeah, that is a uh, expression. So all of this here, all of these coefficients a, b, c, these are all as in that. Not writing all that. So okay. So let's just do that. Huh? All of these coefficients g, these are all continuous. Let's say these are smooth coefficients in R two here. So that depends on x and y, where, where, a, b, and all of this is in C infinity R two, right? Now the point is this: if you remember your canonical form, so the canonical form of this particular uh, general equation, canonical form, okay? I hope you understand. So what I meant by this is, see, any second order linear PD can be written in this form. Yes, canonical form. Let's say that is your one. Let's say that is your star. Let's just call it star. So canonical form. What it does is actually, if you in a different, if you in a more suitable um, coordinate system. Okay. So what it does is under a suitable coordinate. coordinate system right under the suitable coordinate system star gets okay so under the suitable coordinate system star uh, gets reduced reduced to either of the following either of the following so what is it it is either W x x plus W y y plus some lower order terms, huh? Lower order terms containing W x, W y, and W x and y. That is equals to zero. Or W x minus W y y plus lower order terms containing W x, W y, W x. Y equals to zero. Yeah, or you can have this form number three, W x x minus W y y plus some lower order term containing W x W y W x and y. Okay, what this canonical form does is it does not change the nature of the uh, equation. If you remember, you, if you look at the discriminant of this uh, equation. Yeah, and depending on the, the, I mean, sign of the discriminant. If it is negative, it is elliptic. If it is positive, it's just a hyperbolic problem. And if it is zero, it's a parabolic problem. Okay, depending on that nature, 
if you do a suitable coordinate change, okay, coordinate, coordinate change, then what happens is you can reduce this to something like this, okay. This this particular equation is an example of an elliptic equation, right, okay. This is, this equation is an example of a uh, heat equation or, or a parabolic equation. Parabolic equation and this equation is an example of a hyperbolic equation. Let us understand what I mean by this. So, let me again recall what I am doing. See, essentially we have a linear second order PD which looks like this. Yes, all the coefficients are smooth. This is what we are assuming. What canonical form does is, see this is in some coordinate system x and y, right? You can change the coordinate system to uv. So here you can change xy to uv, but the, I mean it does not matter. These are all variables, right? You can write xy, you can write uv. So essentially, under the new coordinate system, you can actually change a star, okay, to one of the following um, this thing, expression. So let's say if the, if this star is a elliptic equation to begin with, you, there is a change of coordinate which will actually transform this to this. Yeah, this is much easier to solve. Yeah, this expression. So essentially, we are only interested in the higher order terms. Low order terms, I mean, those we can handle, higher order terms. So it will look like WXX plus WY. Okay, that's the elliptic problem. Again, if the original problem is a parabolic problem, under the change of variable, uh, it, it will look uh, much simpler, which will look like WXX minus WYY plus lower order term. So essentially, this is also a lower order term, but I'm just writing it in this way just to make it uh, look special, okay? So you know, familiar, it's like a heat equation. So that's parabolic form. So you understand, otherwise, I mean, you can just take this WX over here also, it's not a problem. And WXX minus WYY plus A log this, is equal to zero, that's a hyperbolic form. So essentially, this is like a wave equation form. Two second order terms plus low order term like this, okay? So where, let me put it like this, where L of are the lower order terms. Okay? Now, so let me make a small remark. I am assuming here that since this is an advanced PD course, I am assuming that you guys know all of this. Okay, if you do not know, please choose a suitable, suitable uh, textbook. Okay, whatever you want. You see, most te textbook contains this thing. Yes, please choose a suitable textbook. That, uh, for example, Mint and Devnath. Mint and Devnath. Not to review it, okay. See, this the thing which I said. If you guys are familiar with this thing, there is absolutely no issues there. If you are not, then obviously you can just choose any textbook you, you want. I mean, there, this is just an example, okay. Means and there's not partial differential equation. This book, you can just look at that book and just review this. Uh, whatever I said, huh? it's not very difficult thing to do, okay. Now, what's the point of all of this? The point of all of this is, is, is see, if we want to study most linear equations, you do not need to know, you understand, you do not need to know how to solve a general equation like this, okay? All you need to know is how to solve this three prototype equation. If you know how to work with this three prototype, you are done, right? Because ultimately, any linear equation can be reduced to something like the second order, okay? Any linear second order equation can be reduced to one of these three forms, right? So if we can just study these three forms, these are the fundamental forms. If we can just study these three forms, so basically we call this an operator. L of W is W X plus W Y. Okay. How these operators behave, yeah, then we are done. So then we can actually work out our problems. Okay. So let us start by first of all with the um, example. So we define define L of u. So this is what I mean by an operator. Okay. Define L of u to be u x x plus u y y. Okay. Before I move on doing anything, I just want to want you to take 15 seconds, 10-15 seconds and think about if what is L. 
So L is supposed to, as you can understand, it's kind of a function, right? It is taking something and putting it into something, right? It is taking a function and giving back another function which looks like this. So can you tell me where is L defined from? Just take 10, 15 minutes, uh, seconds and just think about it. Right, so mm, let me just tell you where, where it is. See, L is an operator. What do I mean by operator here? So L is, an, is a linear operator. Okay, what do I mean by linear operator? What I mean by this is essentially C. It is taking values from some vector space. U, see, if I am taking a U, Uxs and Uiy has to be satisfied, right? So U has to be at least twice differentiable. So it is C2 of whatever the domain it is. Yeah, I don't care, some domain. Let's say omega. I am starting out with an omega which is subset of R2. So L is from C2 R2. Uh, um, I mean, uh, you are choosing an element of twice differentiable element, okay, and it is giving back uxx plus uyy. If u is twice differentiable, uxx is continuous and uyy is continuous, the sum of two continuous functions is continuous. So, it is giving you back something like this, okay. So, so L from is a, is a linear or second order, second order operator. Operator. This is what I mean by operator. So you see, this is also a function, but in a special way. What is so special about it? That it is not taking elements from a, any ordinary set, but a vector space, okay, of functions. Okay, it is taking elements from a vector space of functions. Right. Now, let us look at um, where all of this comes from. So let us look at some physical motivation. Yeah. So before I do this, let let us put some name to this particular operator. So Laplace equation. Okay. Laplace equation. If you are looking at an equation which looks like this, Laplacian of u, that is given by divergence of gradient u. Okay, you, if you remember, gradient u is let's let's just start with two dimensions. Okay, uh, don't worry about n. N is exactly the same. Okay, let's just start with two dimensions. So in two dimension, u a, a gradient of u, gradient of u is u x and u y, right? So divergence of gradient of u that is u x x plus u y y. Okay, okay. Uh, so this is u x x plus u y y. Okay, that's your Laplacian. Now, uh, there is something, this equation, this is not an equation anymore, I mean, this is just an operator. Now, this, if it is 0, equals to 0, then it's called a Laplace equation. Now, we also talk about a similar equation, which is called the Poisson equation, okay? So, the name is Poisson equation. This is, uh, I mean, most probably, I'm not 100% sure, but Poisson is just a... Uh, it's like a fish in French, okay? So, in the equation looks like this, minus Laplacian of u, okay, minus, there is nothing special about minus, you can write it, you can, may not write it, this is just a convention, minus Laplacian of u equals to f, okay? That is called a Poisson equation, right? Okay, the here, here, we will assume x is in from omega, which is subset of r in, right? So, what I meant by x is an n tuple x1, x2, xn. Okay. Mm, okay, I have used a something. Okay, so let me let me change this thing. So maybe let me do it for uh, from, from now on. I will do it for Rn itself. Okay. Okay. Mm, actually, this is the problem. You see, I should write it like this. Let let me change this part. Huh? Let me change this part. So in two dimension, it will look like this x1 x1 okay x2 x2 so essentially your i mean x1 x2 okay so i'm just writing a tuple in r2 as x1 x2 you can write it as xy also but in that case you can't i mean i just want to i mean reserve x for a element in rn okay so x is x1 x2 so essentially when i'm saying it is an element of rn what i meant is uh, so let me put it here to be Rn. So this is u x n x n. See n equals to two is just this. Huh? I mean here I just want to write x is in omega subset of Rn means x. So essentially x is 
x1 x2 xl okay i mean you do not have to worry about uh, xl i mean the n components just two component whatever it does n component same sort of thing okay okay now Poisson equ equation is minus Laplacian of u equals to f this f will be given to you huh? u from omega bar to r is the unknown function which you need to find unknown function okay and f is any given function function on the open subset of r here so just think about it what i'm saying what i said is you are looking at a u which is from omega bar omega bar is omega is an open set right as i told you if i am not specifying what exactly omega is most of the all the time in this course just assume omega to be an open set in r so omega bar is a closed set the closure of omega to r that is an unknown function and f is any given function on an open subset of r here okay now the question is you just have to find what u is that's that's the question okay so i will start with a small definition here definition so let's say a c2 function a c2 function u is called a harmonic function if it satisfies the Laplace equation right so if you are looking at a u such that Laplacian of u equals to 0 then that is that sort of function is called a harmonic function okay now example take five seconds just think about an example of a harmonic function okay let me tell you what is a, a very easy example let's say if you are let's say omega to be r n okay and u of x1 xn to be identically equals to a constant okay constant okay now if that is the case what do you think laplacian of u should be any derivative of this is zero so laplacian u equals to zero so that's a trivial uh, harmonic function right and of course one special uh, thing about harmonic functions are okay uh, zero is always included so zero so ux equals to since constants always hold zero therefore ux equals to zero is always harmonic always harmonic and this is harmonic in any domain right i mean it does not matter whenever you can take any omega you want omega is any open set and u of x is always going to be a harmonic function okay uh, so that's one example can you give think of another example uh, so let us assume that omega is in open set and u of x1 um, maybe i don't know maybe x1 x2 xn let's just call it huh? i'm writing it for xn you can just think of two dimension also no issues so let's say that is xi whatever i is yeah? i can be one two whatever yeah n now if that is the case let's look at what laplacian of u is laplacian of u in this case is u x1 x1 plus u of xn xn now i don't have to calculate this thing you guys can understand that this is going to be zero okay so any coordinate function this sort of function is called a coordinate function right any coordinate function is harmonic okay let's take another non-trivial function here huh? so in two dimension let's just think two dimension huh? x1 x2 to be x1 square minus x2 square let's see if this is harmonic or not huh? it may be it may not be uh, let's just as a look at it laplacian of u is u x x x1 x1 minus u y1 y1 plus u y1 okay 
now u x1 x1 as you can see the first derivative is 2 x1 second derivative is x2 so that is 2 plus u y1 sorry it's not y1 y1 it is x2 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 okay and plus 2 x2 x2 is minus 2 okay that will give you 0 so Laplacian of u is 0 so hence this is an example therefore uh, ux1 x2 given by x1 square minus x2 square is also harmonic so there are I mean there will be other examples also but these are more, more or less the basic examples of harmonic function okay before we move on let us look at what is so special about harmonic function so uh, first of all properties properties okay we define h yeah h to be the set of all c2 omega bar functions such that laplacian of u equals to 0 okay so this is the set of harmonic functions set of harmonic functions harmonic functions okay h is a set of all c2 omega bar functions as the laplacian u equals to 0 so that is the set of harmonic function now i want to see what are some special properties of this set see let us say that uh, let let f and g are in h okay let's see what happens define and define and define a plus g you know, acting at x to be f of x plus g of x okay if i define it like this clearly clearly see uh, if this is the case then laplacian of a plus g yeah this is going to be laplacian of f plus laplacian of g okay how is this true because of linearity yeah if you are not convinced about this thing i am not proving all of this yeah it is uh, going to be time consuming i mean it is not uh, it is just two lines but please check this part yeah it's not very difficult moreover moreover you see for a c in r for any c in r if you define c times f acting at x to be c times f of x and f is in h okay you start with f in h and c in r and you define cf like this then laplacian of cf let's see what happens it is definitely c times laplacian of f huh? this also you can check please check this part huh? check this check check okay now think about this if you consider this property that you can given two functions f and g the sum is uh, linear and the constant times f is also in h right so this this definitely belongs to h it means that cf belongs to h okay what does that say it says therefore h is a vector space vector space okay h is a vector space so this is very special about it this is all of this is happening because the operator is a linear operator okay since since delta so this is called a delta this symbol is called delta is a linear operator linear operator clear okay now what we are going to do is we are going to look at some physical interpretations how where do we use this sort of uh, operator okay see this is the most widely used operator in all of partial differential equation and probably uh, one of the most important objects in all of mathematics laplacian okay so it is very important that we know understand and uh, i mean appreciate what uh, how um, beautiful this operator is so let's look at some physical interpretation physical interpretation okay so first of all let us assume that u is the density of some chemical concentration in equilibrium okay let us assume u is some function huh? so this represents the density 
of some chemical composition okay I mean some, some substance is given you are looking at the chemical composition of that thing okay in equilibrium equilibrium here yeah. okay equilibrium is when it is stable okay now let us say that the chemical is contained in some uh, I mean you know region which we will call as omega so the region we are where the chemical is contained clear so that's your omega omega is our domain okay so let us see what happened see uh, let's say that's your omega that's your omega yeah now let us assume that v is some v yeah so let let v be a smooth okay v be a smooth region region contained in omega right so that's your v let's say any smooth region which can which is contained in omega now if that is the case there seems to be some problem with the software okay let's just uh, take another page okay so if uh, that is the case then so basically what i'm saying is if v uh, is a smooth is a smooth so contain in you is smooth is smooth Okay, so what am I doing? That's your U. Okay, and uh, this is where the chemical is. So the chemical is, and U is the density of the chemical, and that chemical is in equilibrium. And you are just looking at another small sub region, okay, which is V. Sorry, this is not U, I'm calling it an omega. V is containing omega, that's the meaning, right? Okay, now. Mm, you see since the i mean the mm, chemical yeah the concentration that is in equilibrium the chemical is in equilibrium okay so therefore the net flux the net flux so net flux means whatever is going in or coming out okay of you of you through the boundary of v del v is zero right this is quite easy and if that is true, what does that say? Del V F dot gamma ds is zero, right? So basically, there is no flow of um, the flux density is not changing, yeah, in the uh, unit direction. So let's say gamma is this, huh? gamma is the unit outward direction, okay? So where where F is the flux density, flux density and gamma is the unit okay outward direction so what i meant by this is see uh, see the the whole liquid yeah or whatever the chemical is it's in equilibrium right so if you look at a small region wherever on the omega small smooth region the net flow okay of the chemical the density the change in the density basically uh, the net flux of you okay through this boundary of the, the v yeah that is going to be zero yeah so if f f denotes the flux density then uh, i mean in that direction in any direction i mean whatever the gamma is yeah in any direction gamma the flux density if you take the integral of that that is going to be zero yeah now if that is the case in, from green's theorem or Gauss theorem actually from from Gauss divergence Gauss divergence if you remember when you looked at uh, I mean integration by parts okay I said that it is going to be one of the most uh, important uh, you know how do I put it uh, most exact important thing you can learn integration by parts so okay we are going to use that integration by parts so here so let's say that uh, integral del v f dot comma ds is zero yeah 
then mm, you use gauss divergence and say that you see integral over v the divergence of f okay d of x that is equals to integral of del v f dot gamma ds right and that is going to be zero yes so how are you getting this is gauss divergence theorem. so basically uh, gd gauss divergence theorem okay gauss divergence theorem says this and from here we get this flux is zero okay now see this v is arbitrary right this v can be anything so you are saying that a object when you integrate that object over any sub region smooth sub region that is going to be zero what does that say that the divergence of f is going to be zero in v okay v is arbitrary of course rb sorry in omega arbitrary okay in omega i have to say it is in omega why it is in omega c v is contained in omega right v is arbitrary so you are saying that you are taking the divergence you are taking some object and integrating it in any smooth sub region of omega and that integration is zero yeah so definitely the object in question that is going to be zero right if you are not convinced here please check this part okay so check this check check that uh, let's say u is in c let's say 2 of omega b such that integral over let's say u okay and um, dx over v this is zero for for any smooth v containing omega okay then u has to be zero in omega okay see one thing is this why am i talking about smooth v in omega if you remember gauss divergence theorem says that you have to have this region where you are integrating that region has to be a smooth region right at least c1 so that is why i'm just assuming it to be smooth okay now you see uh, there is something called so since we are talking about chemical concentration there is something called a fixed law okay fixed law of diffusion this is from your physics okay fixed law of diffusion that says that uh, the flux density f is proportional to um, gradient of u right so basically what it is saying is um, minus some constant times gradient of u okay right so why minus because uh, the flow the flux density the flow okay uh, is from is from the region of higher to lower concentration see if there is a flow in the system here it is now huh? if there is a flow in the system that is always going to be from a region of higher concentration to the lower concentration right so that is why this negative sign is there it's just say that the flow is somehow you know um, in a negative way and uh, this c of course is a constant of proportionality i mean we are just saying that f is proportional to gradient of u okay and gradient of u is just the change of uh, i mean uh, the flux uh, so basically the change of the density so and this c is positive we are assuming because otherwise there's minus c we will get it so if f is minus c times gradient u let's just put it here therefore divergence divergence of minus c times gradient of u that will give you minus c times divergence of gradient of u right that will be zero because divergence of f is zero f is f look like this so divergence of gradient u is zero so that will give us that laplacian of u is zero because c is positive right since c is positive that will give you or minus laplacian i don't care i mean it's, okay now see the very important thing is this is uh, from fixed law we got that laplacian of u is equal to zero now you just uh, if you want to so this is an harm laplace equation okay so that's a laplace equation the whole idea of this is see uh, here if it is a chemical concentration you are talking about fixed law okay fixed law will give us the laplace equation 
Actually, if it is a Fourier law of heat conduction, that is also similar to this. Yeah, if the Fourier law of heat conduction, then that also will give you a Laplace equation. Okay, in that case, you will consider. So, um, let's say for heat conduction, U will be your uh, temperature, the function U, and if it's a Ohm's law, electricity conduction, then U will be the electrostatic potential. Okay, so this is a very very important th thing to understand. Okay, uh, so with this, what we are going to do is in the next uh, lecture set of lectures, we are going to talk about uh, how to work with Laplace equation. Yeah, so with this, we are going to end this particular video.